All right, guys, part two of the VQ35. Let's get into everyone's favorite, the math. All right, so now we've got some figures. Uh, the seat, 31.7 roughly. Uh, the window is gonna be about 45 mil by 40 millimeters. So this is basically just a circle that's been split apart with a rectangle in the middle, similar to two J's and everything. So this is the easiest way to work it out. Obviously work out the radius of the circle and the rectangle. So the circle's diameter is obviously 40 mil. So we just minus 40 from 45. That'll give us a five width by 40 for our rectangle. Um, and that's what we've done here. That's 200 square millimeters. Pi R squared of the 40 gives us the 1275 millimeter squared, gives us a total of 1457 at the window. Now, if we look at the valve seat on the throat that it's been set up originally, we're at 31.5, same thing. Pi R squared gives us um, 789 square millimeters each, times two gives us 1579. So as you can see, the valve throat is already bigger than the port window. It's not really optimal, but as you can see, there's no point putting any bigger um, throat in this engine, otherwise you're just killing airspeed. Or, depending on the RPM and what our average airspeed is, uh, we really need a bigger window in it, and, and we're not going to do that. Or we, we're going to actually open it up to that 1457 because it's not that it's only about uh, 1295 at the moment with the casting so as you can see probably the most important area to even start with is the um, the window there taking that casting out this isn't um, always the problem with uh, engines as you can see over the years twin cams have got a slightly smaller window because in the early 90s they tended to be too big now now they're starting to come in on size so i like my mca so the smallest part of the primary induction length usually at the seat because what we're trying to create is uh, basically a funnel in your primary induction length so this is sort of what we want that way the airspeed accelerates to the valve seat. That'll harness the most inertia possible out of any scenario. Um, early heads that were sort of this way, the MCA is halfway up, like small block chev, um, pinches at the push rod. Your inertia length has been halved, right? This is acceleration, this is deceleration. So we're decelerating to the valve, we're losing energy. So this is the best approach. We won't be going crazy with this one. It's only a thousand horsepower twin turbo. So I'm gonna leave that about that. I'm not gonna put a big throat in this engine at all. Uh, we're just gonna measure up the rest of the ports. If the CSA is fairly consistent from um, here to the seat, we're just gonna go through and tidy all that up. Obviously we're opening the casting window out to the actual uh, face profile there um, and uh, that that'll be pretty much it we're going to tidy the divider up and uh, yeah all right let's all get right, into so it. now we've got an idea of where to actually take metal out of the port we're going to put it on the bench and we're just going to take that window out so the casting little step ins we're going to blend it out to the window and not perfectly either we're just roughing it out we're going to rough all the windows out uh, and i'll show you what that looks like now Okay, so stage one done. So we've just gone in there. As you can see, it's not perfect, but it's pretty close now. So if we line that up, we're not too bad. So we're just going down each side. As you can see, I've still got a little bit, and I'll clean that up with the finer burr because I don't want it this coarse on this cylinder head. But um, that's basically it. We've just touched the floor. I haven't gone to the roof. Remember, you're better off working sort of from, uh, what's that? two o'clock to sort of 10 o'clock, any more than that, uh, it gets a little bit uh, hard on the burr and your hands and consistency becomes an issue. All right, on to the next step. All right, so guys, now we're just gonna continue that right through the ports, right across the cylinder heads. We're gonna do all the intakes. I like to do the same spot everywhere in a cylinder head, uh, unless I'm developing a port and I'll go through and I'll do myself a list of what cutters we use and, and do the whole port. But when you're doing mild ports like this, 
Uh, we, we've got a good sense of where we need to go on the board now. We've got a little bit of math. We know what the CSA looks like. I've also gone in and measured a little bit more. I might put that up in another video. But um, just go through and, and get it all close and get yourself just a cheap set, $10 um, set of calipers um, or, or dividers, whatever they call them. And this makes it real easy. Set them as a stop, go, stop, go. And basically, once you've done one port, set it and then just go along and do it. I don't use them as much as I used to anymore because you'll be surprised how good your eyes actually get once you've been porting for a, a lot of years. And um, I'll be coming up to uh, 30 years soon of porting. So it, it becomes a lot easier. The, like anything, the more time you put in it, the easier it gets. And the better your eyes get at seeing the inconsistencies. And any anyone that's listening to this that's done any bit of real time importing will know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you, you know the shapes that work. You know that the CSA is such a huge influence to obviously getting good results on the flow bench, but even better results at the racetrack. So um, consistency is the key, and you'd be very, very surprised how consistent you can actually get it just by hand porting, especially if you practice. And all the guys have lots of little things, you know, little radius gauges and all sorts of stuff. I have ours. We might actually even start selling them soon. But uh, catch us in part two. We'll go a little bit further. Cheers.